Hello and welcome to this video on fixed assets in Microsoft Dynamics NAVS 2017, brought to you by KPMG. I'm Caroline Faulkner and in this session I will show you some of the features that Microsoft have included in the fixed assets module. The fixed assets functionality in Microsoft Dynamics NAV provides an overview of your fixed assets and ensures correct periodic depreciation. It also enables you to keep track of your maintenance costs, manage insurance policies related to fixed assets, post fixed asset transactions, and generate reports and statistics. We sometimes have customers who say that they're happy to keep handling their fixed assets in a spreadsheet outside of NAV. Here are some of the great pieces of functionality that NAV offers to convince you otherwise. Firstly, NAV ensures that your fixed asset transactions are fully integrated with the general ledger. There's no need to transfer acquisition, depreciation and disposal journals into NAV from Excel because they're automatically generated through the processes you're already carrying out in NAV. Let's have a look at some of the other benefits, starting with depreciation books. In NAV, you can set up and use multiple depreciation books per fixed asset relating to the depreciation method or the book value. As we have here on the Mercedes 300, you can see that we have an internal depreciation book, which is different to that which is reported to the tax office. If we drill down on the book value field against the company depreciation book, we can see the fixed asset ledger entries which make up this value from the acquisition all the way through to the last time the depreciation was run. If we need to reverse a transaction or cancel it, we can do that easily from the actions tab on the ribbon. When we're purchasing a new fixed asset, we now have the option in NAV 2017 to use a wizard to acquire it. Looking at this new fixed asset that I'm setting up, there are mandatory fields that need to be completed, such as the fixed asset subclass code, the depreciation book, and the number of depreciation years. If we fill in these, we can see that we now get a smart notification to advise that we are now ready to acquire the fixed asset. If we select this option, we are taken through a helpful wizard that asks us for information relating to the acquisition. We can enter the acquisition cost and the acquisition date. We can define the GL account that it needs to be posted to. And at the end, we can select to open the fixed asset general journal that is going to be created by NAV for us to review and post. We simply select post in the ribbon and that finalizes the acquisition of our new fixed asset. There's also a handy function when you're setting up a new fixed asset, which is similar to or exactly the same as an existing one. Instead of filling out all the details multiple times, we can simply select the copy fixed asset function in the actions ribbon, define the fixed asset that we want to copy, define the number of copies and select OK. This is a great function for when you purchase multiple items, such as computers for staff, and you want to be able to set them up quickly and efficiently. We can also record insurance and maintenance for the fixed asset, which we can track through NAV to alert us on due dates for policies and servicing. We can see this information recorded here on the maintenance tab. For fixed assets, which are a combination of multiple items, you can define a main asset and then the component assets, which make it up. So for example, our conveyor fixed asset has been set up as a main asset. If we drill down on the main asset components, we can see the three items, the belt, the lift and the computer, which make up the conveyor. This functionality allows for each component to be set up with a different depreciation method, depreciation starting date, and number of depreciation years. And there may be instances where one of the components needs to be written off and replaced, and this is enabled by this method of recording. Now, when it comes to calculating the depreciation on the fixed assets, it's a very simple task. We just go to the fixed asset list and select the calculate depreciation action in the ribbon. We can define which depreciation book to run it against, the date we want to depreciate to, a posting description, and can filter on the specific fixed asset or run it as we will now for all fixed assets. NAV goes through and calculates the relevant depreciation and creates the fixed asset general journals. We can select yes to this message to open and view the eight fixed asset entries that have been created for us. Here we can see the journal lines that have been created for each fixed asset with the amount showing the relevant number of depreciation days. If we look specifically at fixed asset number 90 here, we can see the three different amounts are going to depreciation equipment account. And this is allocated across three different departments. 
This is made possible through the posting setup to define that a certain percentage of the fixed asset is allocated to each department. This can be very useful where different departments of the company use the fixed asset. Now if we're happy with the journal lines, we can post them so that the depreciation entries are applied to the relevant fixed assets. We say yes to post the journal lines, and Nav goes through and posts the journal and advises us that it's completed. When it comes time to dispose of a fixed asset in Nav, we can create a fixed asset journal for the fixed asset that we're wanting to dispose of, define the posting type of disposal, and define the amount. If we're not able to make a gain from the disposal, we leave the amount field as zero and we can post the journal. If we're selling the fixed asset to a customer, we could also use a sales order to achieve the disposal, customer ledger entry and gain. However, after posting our journal, we can go to the fixed asset that we disposed of and we can see that the book value is now zero and the disposed of field has been ticked automatically by NAV. So as you can see, fixed assets in NAV is very easy and can handle a wide range of scenarios relating to depreciation, cost allocation, insurance, maintenance, and asset disposal. Thanks for your time today to show you these fixed asset features in NAV 2017. If you'd like more information on how NAV 2017 can work for you, please contact us at 1300 191 000 or email dynamics at kpmg.com.au.